is nice. You sit in the same house. Thank you, Jeremiah. Your mom is nice, yeah? Thank you very much, Jeremiah. Oh, why do you have to beat your son? Sorry, hello. Come, Jeremiah. Why do you have to beat your son? Hi guys, welcome back to Trash It. It's an honor, okay? At the moment, we've ha we've got someone with us. I'm, I'm sort of gobsmacked, okay? You, you would have noticed that. And I'm sure you guys watched the video in the beginning. We're gonna let you into the reason we put that video in the beginning. But before we start, we've got a max man in the building, okay? We've got- I am man. Yes, okay. <laughs> Nelson, we're not ignoring you, okay? We're, we're coming- No, 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 it's but okay. First of all, we've got a max man in the building and we've got Mr. African Jagba Jan Sticks, okay? You guys know him, he's he's on Instagram, like he be bringing you all the news, all the latest gist. So if you don't, if you're not following him, you're missing out big time. You should so actually be following him. I know, right? So thank you for coming on the show and thank you for, you know, agreeing to be here and to share, you know, your thoughts and your experience because we're still doing this domestic violence thing, guys. You know, because the lockdown, it's, it's, it's happening. Every, right now there's domestic violence happening as we're talking. So yeah, so Absolutely. that's what we're bringing to you today. And also Nelson, thank you for coming back to the show. It's, you know, it's a pleasure to have you back. So thank you very much. And we've got your usual host, Yuri. You guys know Yuri already, okay? Yuri, Yuri. <laughs> yes, <sir. laughs> okay. So yeah, guys, you've seen the video in the beginning, okay? So in the era of Me Too movement, where when a woman reports domestic violence, sexual assault, rape, she has to be believed no matter what. You know, and sometimes it's difficult for you to start quizzing her and start asking her all these questions. How did it happen? Where did it happen? What did you do? And all of that. You know, the Me Too movement sort of doesn't want you to do all that because you're putting extra pressure on the woman. And you're, you know, sometimes they do say she can forget the story, you know, about what happened, about being abused. But here we are. A lot of people are going to prison. For, 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 for allegations they didn't even commit, for things that they know nothing about, okay? So what we're going to look at is domestic violence from the man's perspective, okay? Because sometimes it's not all people, it's not everybody that cries wolf that you must believe. It's not all domestic violence that is domestic violence, okay? Obviously, whether, whether it's heating and beating and all that, it's, it's obvious, you can see it. But when something like you've just watched in the beginning of this video happens, it's difficult for you to actually say yes that is domestic violence so we're going to be going to the men we're going to be asking them a few questions because some of you watching at home you've got male children and our male children are almost like endangered species in the in the era that we're in because number one they're black and then they're you know and then they're male and imagine if someone from the opposite race accused mm. them of sexual we'll that what do you what you know how do they come out of it because number if, if a police officer were to arrest them they would believe them and just say yes you've done this and they throw you in prison before they even start to look at the the, the investigate the story so first of all we're going to go to um we're going to go to um mr africa diagnostic here yeah? and we, what we just want you to you know explain to us you know as a man, what do you think? You know, do you think women's stories should be scrutinized? Do you think we should believe them and just, you know, put the man in prison? Or do you think it should be scrutinized? We should be looking into their story, crossing all the T's and dotting the I's. My dear sisters, in everything you said, in the way you put the question, trust me, already there's a lot of answers in what you said, you know, because First of all, we're in a different society and we're, we're like a target already. Either you do anything or not, you're already a target. Now somebody is giving them the opportunity to actually nail you to the cross. So first thing I want us to understand is no matter how we say it, either the woman is wrong or not, some people are already in danger, the kids. Now, if a woman is the one coming out to say, I'm under threat, this man is killing me, it's okay, it is good, we have to listen to her because either she is in the wrong or the right, she's gonna get killed. Mm. So we have to listen to her because the man that we're looking at, 
may also be the one in the wrong. And if the man is in the right, the woman may still get to be the one to be killed. Not because she is right or she is wrong, but because she is the weaker, uh, weaker sex in the relationship. The moment there is danger, the, the cause of the fight is no longer an issue. Okay. Nobody wants to hear about the cause. Do you get? So if a woman is beating me in the house, using fry pan to beat me in the head, or slapping me while I'm asleep, the, the day I break from my points, every man has a uh, breaking point. Yeah. Every, ham, every man has an elastic limit. The day I break out of that point and retaliate, just one slap and she bangs her head on the sink or falls down in the toilet and she faints. It eliminates everything else that's been happening before then. And the man becomes the Dracula or the evil man. Now, the, the most important thing I want us to look at in any domestic violence, if you look at gay couple, man and man together, mm -hmm. compared to gay couple, woman and woman together, you see that there is 70% of violence between female gay couples and the, as opposed to the 30 male couples. Mm. So women, me and Nelson can become friends today, sleep with the same girl, see tomorrow morning I'll be like, ah, this guy, you've done it, blah, 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 blah. The next hundred years, we're still friends. Let two girls be friends and have ordinary argument issues. They'll be enemies immediately. You know, me and Nelson will meet in America again and be like, ah, mad, mad, see you. We're drinking. Now, if you look at a woman's attitude and a woman in a relationship, they never last. Gay couples, I mean. So okay. there alone is a light. The way women talk, men, if you think you're mature, you need to understand how to process a woman's anger. Okay. I've been married for more than a decade. I've never laid my hands on my woman. There is no reason for it. We fight. Mm -hmm. We argue. It is normal. If I can fight with my sister and... I'm in my mid forties and I have not disowned them. Then I should be able to process any misunderstanding between me and my missus. We have sisters. If we can live with them and they're married and their husband can tolerate them, why should we not tolerate other girls? Okay. Nobody is perfect. Okay. You Listen, get me? I don't want to take too much time. No, that's fine. I'm just going to go back to the sort of like the middle of your answer. Um, I'm not yeah. trying to insinuate anything because you said that, um, when the woman, when the man reaches his elastic limit where he can no yes. longer take it and then he bursts and he might retaliate by hitting the woman. So in a way, does that mean that a woman is kind of asking for it? it you don't have to ask. It is called, um, there is this English. It is... Um, is it that you've reached your threshold that you can't take it anymore? Yes, yes. It's you not know, fight or flight. <laughs> it, um, you know when somebody is provoking you and provoking you, you are not in control. It yeah. is you have crossed your in, uh, you have crossed from sanity to insanity. Okay, okay. You are no longer thinking straight. So the thing will happen like a flash, and then you realize that you've crossed your boundary. Okay. You get me. It is it is human to be like that. It is like you're beating an animal. You're beating a goat. When the goat gets to a wall. The goat is going to turn back right. and attack. Okay. It is a reflex. Okay, okay. All right, I'm going to go to Nelson. Nelson, let's hear what you have to say. Okay, I think um, Jagba Jan's take has covered loads of it. Um, from what we watched, it is clear that the lady was acting up. She was acting it. Mm. That, to me, it just puts... Um, it's the reason why, why we shouldn't take everything that gets reported Thanks, plainly man. because they've reported, it was reported by a lady. What we should do is to make sure, listen to them, but make sure we 
get to the source of the whole issue because for a man to raise up his hand, there are some men, they're just used to it. Maybe the way they were brought up, the homes they've come from, it's just something that they think is okay to do. But for decent men that, like what he mentioned, which is some will just get to that threshold and then they just snap. And if that happens and they do a thing like that, there are people that will pull themselves back. That might be the last time they will ever do it because they would mm. know that they've done something that they shouldn't have done. Whereas there are some that is, is what they're used to. So they don't see it as anything else apart from if anything goes wrong, ba 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 hit the lady. But that video that we watched shows us that those are sort of videos that would tell us that not everything that comes to the media that is correct. Mm -hmm. If the gentleman was in record, I don't know if he's a gentleman, but if the man was in recording, we wouldn't have known. And then he could have gone down for it. Mm -hmm. okay. it, it. What she did, what she did, I think that should be discussed a lot because she just, she, she's jeopardizing the genuine cases. Thank you. Thank she's you. Jeopardizing, je jeopardizing the genuine cases. So in that, in, that, in that sense, I think that it is good for them to, li to be listened to, listen to the women, because, okay, domestic violence is not one way. Mm -hmm. It's both the women and the men. Mm -hmm. So listen to whoever is reporting it, wherever mm -hmm. it's coming from, listen to them, but dig into the cause of why it happened and how it led to what then happened. Let me come in. Um, I actually, when I saw the video, you know, you don't want to take the video out of face value. And you just be like, okay, like Nelson said, she may have jeopardized valid, or I'm not saying that experience is not valid, but you know, when you look at that and see other people and be like, okay, are you actually crying? Well, mm -hmm. let's not go there for two seconds. But I want to go back to you guys. You know, we talk about, when we talk about domestic violence, we're always talking about the women. In most cases, most women are the victim. It's looking at the statistics. Men that report domestic violence are not quite a lot. So I don't know if both of you can either shed light on why men don't report. We can't say men don't experience it. I understand male to male is predominant. Even female to male is even a lot. Yeah. So why is it that men don't report um, domestic violence? What is the barrier? Are there any personal stories that you can share? Yeah. Let me go to Nelson to first, first, and then I will come you to you. To go first, or do you want no, Nelson let me go to, to Nelson go first. first. Okay. Okay. What I think that is 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 the is the man's ego. Okay. So when when something comes, what can you hear me? Yeah. yeah. Can you hear you? Okay. So when something, if such is happening in a house, in a home, the men are most likely to keep it to themselves because they don't want to be judged. They don't want people to think, what's going on? Why, why would you say your wife is abusing you? You're the man, you should man up. We expect men to man up. Mm -hmm. So in that sense, men will usually keep it within themselves, which is dangerous because it could kill them as well. Mm -hmm. and, and it's good that we're talking about this because if men don't speak up, it could lead to something drastic. As long as we do, we do hear the women speak up because they're used to speaking up. Men are not like that. Men would keep things within themselves. It's not a good thing, but I think we, we were trained, oriented to feel that way, to think that way, to act that way. Just keep it. You can handle it as a man. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I would think that's why. I would think that's why we we do not men don't talk that much. Yeah. Yes. And well, I'll go to you. Yeah. So, uh, for me, the way I've seen it, there is this social construct that kinds of uh, restricts we men from opening up. Even mm. I've got a ballistic number of men approaching me, telling me their stories, but in the end, they don't want me to post it because they're seen as weak. You know, if you come out and tell me your story that you're going through this at home, the, the first thing in the man's mind is, ah, what kind of man are you? Wow. Even when I'm sharing a story online in one of my live videos or any of my live videos, you already see in the comment section people saying, ah, what kind of man is that? Ah, that one is not man. Now, how do you expect other people reading or other people going through sin to come forward? Obviously, they're not going to be able to come. They don't have power to speak up at all. 
they don't have power to step forward and speak up. What do you think will happen to them? Emotionally, they're going to be destroyed. It will cross from being sane to insanity. There is no way. It will lead to mental disorder. Yeah. Now, a man may be very strong. A man may look bigger than Hulk Hogan or Incredible Hulk. It doesn't mean the common sense is big. Mm. All of us, we have different ways of processing information. The way Nelson will react to cover slap may be different from mine. I may take it and draw the woman and be like, do you want Langba? Or oh, yeah, go to the room. <laughs> Somebody will be like, are you mad? Whoa. Call the mom. Mom. She started the game, this and that. And, you know, we, we do things differently, we men. But the thing is, we need to start telling men to speak up. Mm. Because speaking up is not uh, a sign of weakness. Weakness, yeah. Mm-hmm. It's a sign of strength. Because if you don't speak up, one day you're going to die. I have friends who have died in the same situation. Mm. You know, I have younger brother that... I used to visit them in school. My brother went to a boarding school in Oshobu. I used to visit them, give them money, give them food, blah, 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 because our parents were back here in the UK. I would go there, give them money, and I would go back home. I was in my final year in school then. Guess what? We all relocated to the UK. This guy was doing well. He was one of their area managers at Holiday Inn, you know, going from location to location. This guy was killed. He's been having, you, all of you, I'm sure you saw that news, uh, um, that story in the news. It was yeah, you're talking was, about Lowell. Lowell happened in Nibadon. Yeah, I know. I'm talking the about the one that happened in UK. Oh. They posted this picture with Balotelli all over the place. He's Balotelli's best friends. My younger brother introduced him to Balotelli. Wow. Because my younger brother does PR for a lot of UK footballers, different teams. So that's how they met. And from there, anytime Balotelli is in London, they will hang out and all that. They just used Balotelli to sell the story. Mm-hmm. They shouldn't have brought Balotelli in. But mm. bottom line is, this guy was killed. And he's, all, he's been reporting before that his girlfriend is this, his girlfriend is doing that. The next thing, the girlfriend called the police and said he killed himself. Nobody was there. How can a man grab a knife, somebody who is doing well, driving flashy cars, has a nice, you know, luxury oh. apartment? Grabs a knife and stab himself in the heart. It is not easy. It is not even easy to to do piercing. I know. Not to talk of Mm -hmm. I want to do myself for love. It is impossible. You know, he's he's dead now. Yeah. There is no dead man that can speak for himself. It is when you are alive that you can say, Ah, she's going to kill me. You, you get me. Mm. Pardon me for my raw Yoruba accent. I'm just bring it on. I like to be real, you know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so there are so many men like that. There are so many men. So the moment a woman is overpowered, the news will go all over the place. But you never get to see more than 10 seconds. Back in the days when I was doing when I was a student, uh, I was working as a security and I did a CCTV. Uh, CCTV training and part of the training there is a law legal law that binds you when you're using a video footage as an evidence mm. you can't use a 10 second video as an evidence what happened before what happened after you can't just come and show where the man is beating you bah, 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 and the video is done what happened let us see the beginning of the video mm-hmm. most times it is very rare for you to see a man grab a camera and say I'm recording you be beating me, beat me, oh, I'm recording you. That's, that's a wuss. That's mm. a weak man. Mm. That is what the society will say. Will say, yeah. 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 But it is only rare, on rare occasions, that you will see men record video. They will deal with the situation. But the woman who has an agenda will be quick to record. A woman can push you. A woman can push you. If I'm your brother now, we grew up together. You know I never laid hands. You know I don't do this thing. And all of a sudden, you see a video of me on the internet. The first thing you will think is, hold on a minute. Ah, 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 ah. When did you turn to that kind of person? Hmm. Nobody, it is because you're related to me. That is why you're thinking like that. If you don't know me, the first thing you will say, 
And the first thing I will say as a man is, man, no, 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 no. This guy needs to go to jail. Yeah. yeah. It's normal. Nobody wants to know the backstory of the whole thing. And it is wrong. It is wrong. Nelson. Sorry, um, um, Mr. Jabin Jackson. Now, so you wanted to say something. I could see you trying to butt in there a bit. Yes, yes. I just thought we should propagate that men should always speak up. Men should yeah. speak up. They don't, yeah. but they should. If that's happening to them, we should propagate them. Speaking There's no up. shame in it. There's no shame in it. There's no, no shame. shame in it. God bless I just you. Always if I may that. ask, where does this notion of men, um, women being the weaker sex, where did that come from? Because from I am this just to school. It's from, from the social it, constructs. It's, it's, yeah, yes, I it's from so. orientation. It's how we were brought up. Yeah, I think that's just like a natural thing. Yeah. Basically. Yeah, I, I think that's it. I don't no, I, I mean in, in in this in this time of you know emancipation, I don't know if that's if I if I'm going to change anyway. Women being seen as just because maybe because of the man's masculinity and all of that, you know. I don't know if, if that's ever going to change. Yes, the uh, society is judging with physique. Yeah. yeah, women are intelligent. Absolutely, absolutely. I cannot love a woman that is not intelligent. Mm -hmm. Women are smart. You, we, we're underrating women by saying weaker sex. They are not weak. No, they not might not be physically no, strong, but intellectually. Yeah, I've seen some women. They're, they're, say, they're, they're living their life out of you. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't say we are underestimating True. women. I think some most people in the society are underestimating women. Whereas mm. those that are known don't underestimate women. We know what they can do and we know how intelligent they can be. Of course, of course. Okay, women... I'm just gonna I'm gonna come in now and I'm just gonna ask. Okay, I'm gonna stare it a bit to a different um, a different section. So you know <laughs> things are happening out there, yeah. right? And you know, gone are the days where a man and a woman they you know they get married or people date in and they just have sex. And, and, you know, they don't explore. Now, a lot of things are happening. People are exploring. BDSM, um, um, you know. Anything, uh, anything. Everything is, is <laughs> in. Do you understand? It's so true. now, I want to go to a situation oh. where a woman who likes to be choked <laughs> when she's having sex, who likes it rough, okay? And she meets a guy who equally enjoys that sort of, you know, sexual play. And, and it happens, and they do it rough, but then the woman, after the whole thing, goes and cries wolf and says she was sexually abused and she was raped. And obviously, when, you, when, you, when they do the um, medical examination, they're going to see traces, they're going to see evidence the that evidence. this man has, sexual, you know, has slept with this girl. But then it was consensual because she wanted it rough, and he gave it to her rough. So do you think, how, how can the justice system not fail that man? Because that man ah. could be our children. Who knows what's going to happen 20 years time. People, things can be happening in this sexual world. Ah. Understand? So how, how, what happens? How the, can the justice system help the man in that situation? That I'll, let our children, our sons. I'll let Nelson go first. Okay. I'll let Nelson go first. Okay, Nelson, you. Nelson, you're the hot seat. <laughs> so what, what I would say is, like, like uh, Jabba said, um, if you don't mind me calling you that, yeah, 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 sure. Okay, so the back story, whatever led to it, should always be considered. We cannot just always take things that come to our front on face value. We must always dig deep. So in, in, in some of the Me Too, Me Too movement, what happened, happened many, many years ago, mm -hmm. and they came back to hunt these people. I'm not saying what they did, they didn't wrong. do any, what they did was wrong, obviously, mm. but these things happened way back. So what we're discussing now could play out in 20 years, 30 years time. So it's important that we begin to put things in place to make sure that those things are not overlooked. Because like you explained, if she called for it initially and then she eventually thought what she done, she has changed her mind and then come go on and report. They shouldn't just take that they should at least go back into what led to it. It's always important to find out what led to situations before okay. taking, going, before concluding. Okay, let's hear from you, Mr. Um, Dagdansi. So, um, you see this case, <laughs> uh, uh, you, you spoke like it's a very small thing, but <laughs> if you know the number of guys that are in jail, mm. 
Leon, uh, what's this guy's name? The guy that did um, uh, Pirates of the Caribbean. He yeah. nearly got done for that. Leonardo DiCaprio? Yeah. No, not Leonardo DiCaprio. The, the guy oh, that Johnny did Johnny Depp. Johnny Depp. Johnny Depp. Johnny Depp. Johnny Depp. Johnny Depp nearly got done. And a few others. There is another guy, top Hollywood star, who was having a drink with his girl. And a woman nearly, you know, implicated him for sexual harassment. And, wow. his, and his wife was like, are you really serious? I've been here. What do you mean? His wife saved him. Now, my childhood friend, we grew up together, Bimbo. I don't want to mention his son name. The younger brother is called Tunde. Tunde went to one of these clubs in East London. And there was this girl, because she saw them popping champagne and stuff. Mm -hmm. Or this show off, it always get them in trouble. Mm. This girl saw that, and this girl was all over him, you know, dancing with him, giving him all the front and back, kissing him in the club. As they were going home, he was trying everything to follow this guy. He was on camera. Mm. Okay, she went with him, they went home. Entering their apartment, there is a camera. And then in his apartment, I think there is a camera somewhere. So all the shenanigans they were doing on the sofa, how they had sex and everything was recorded. Mm. Nobody took note of all the camera. Now, in the morning, around 5 a.m., he just heard bang, bang, bang on the door. Open the door, we're police, police. You know how they do in UK. Mm -hmm. So they opened the door. The next thing, he's, I mean, they banged the door open. He stood up, he was shocked to see police because you know, when you finish having sex, all of you, both of you will be sleeping mm. and hoping that when she's going in the morning, he would give her something. Now, the next thing they said, you have the right to remain silent. Anything you use will be, anything you say will be used against you at the court of law, blah, blah, blah. You're being arrested for rape, blah, blah, blah. And the girl started crying. And he looked at the girl like, what's going on? Did you make a call? She made the call from the bathroom. Wow. Wow. Now, the case took a long time. So they started from the club. They requested for evidence. They saw the footage. They saw how the girl was all over him. They asked, it, they asked her, are you sure this is rape? Yeah, he raped me. He did, he did this, he did that. She was so solid. She was so, she was so bent on sending him to jail. And they checked from the security camera. When they, you know when people are leaving the club, you check that they're not taking out alcohol. They collected yeah. alcohol from them. They continued their journey. So they drove home. When they entered the apartments, they collected that footage as well. Mm -hmm. And the one in the flask. Now, when they played it at the court, the girl was shocked. Okay? And Sunde was like, yeah, I told you. I, did, I never did anything. She made the move on me. There was nothing like rape. We both agreed to it. We both had sex. There was nothing like rape. She now said, yeah, she thought he wasn't going to give her money when she leaves. Wow. That's why she did that. But you haven't even asked for money. Well, you you haven't that. even asked for yeah. money. And Just the judge was like, do you want to press charges? So they yeah. said no, because that time he was still looking for papers. He was a student. Oh, do you know how many people that have been sent home? Just to buttress your point, um, Mr. Jack Jastic, I, I remember um, in 2011, the IMF boss, I don't know if you guys heard the story, Strauss Kahn, he was arrested as well at the airport by the FBI because the hotel mm. staff also accused him of sexual assault, okay? And luckily for, and he had to, he had to resign from his job and he mm. had to pay her, settle her out of court. But luckily for him, what vindicated him was the fact that the hotel CCTV caught the girl and, his, and her colleague high-fiving each other to say, yes, our plan worked. That was why, that was how he was vindicated as well. So a lot of these stories are happening. You see? Now, let me come in for two seconds because I just want to say that now that in most cases, um, it's difficult for a black man, like what happened to um, your, your friend in question, Chinde, to prove his innocence. Now, if we could remember that film, When They See Us, it was about, I'm sure all of us have seen that Netflix series. We have, we're all raising black children who would eventually go to universities and may date outside their race especially when they're dating caucasian women our boys are usually labeled as angry misunderstood yada 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 and we're not the most cooperative when police are actually stopping us let's be honest yeah, well, so in a situation like that 
how do we then protect our children? Because you can't say don't date outside your race. You don't choose who you fall in love with. But in instances that sometimes your race is considered first before the offense. Mm. So what True. I'm saying is people need to understand there are consequences to your actions. And one of the consequences to this woman's action is she could have gotten this young man killed by just yeah. doing what and, she did. And, Do and, you think? Yeah. And, and Whoopi, you and I were talking about it. And for me, um, I, I think we should show the clip so, so that people um, have the context. Sir, I'm asking you to stop recording me. Please don't come close to me. Please take your phone off. Please don't come close to me. And I'm taking a picture and calling the cops. Please, please call the cops. Please call the cops. I'm going to tell them there's an African-American man threatening my life. There is an African-American man. I am in second part. He is recording me and threatening myself and my dog. I'm being threatened by a man in the ramble. Please send the cops immediately. And when I saw this, you know, what she first says is, uh, this started because he wanted her to put her dog on a leash because he's a bird watcher and her dog was running in an area of Central Park where dogs aren't allowed to run. And what was shocking to me is right. that she literally weaponized his race and weaponized her privilege. She knew that by calling the police, it would be to her advantage. And as the mother of a black son, she tried to make happen what is my very worst nightmare. And I, I, I was just so shocked because, you know, people say all the time, you know, just follow the rules. Uh, if you follow what police tell you to do as a black person, you'll be fine. They say that, uh, you know, black people are arrested more frequently than white people because there aren't right. fathers in the home, right. uh, because they're undereducated, right. because they're unemployed. Right. Well, this guy was a Harvard-educated freaking point bird is. watcher. That's right. Bird watcher. Yeah. So the, the, can I you know, so, the, so the point is, he's like the most non-aggressive person, yet her fear was right. based on his race. Fear was based on race, and she the, weaponized the, it against him to call the police. Well, the, the, ahead, tell, the tell is that she kept calling him on the phone, kept saying, it's an African-American man, it's an African... She said it several times. If it was a Caucasian, yes. would she say it was a Caucasian man? Is there? No. So that tells you that it's race, it's racism disguised. Hmm. She doesn't even know she's... How do we go? How do we, go? How do we do this? How do we train our children? How do we support our boys? Because I'm leaning on you guys now, because you're men. Yeah. You know yeah. what happened on the streets. How do we then translate this to our daily lives so that when our kids leave the comfort of their homes, don't get roped in situations that happen with your friend? Mm. I, think, I think what we should do is at home, try our utmost to bring them upright as we would expect them to be, and then enlighten them, educate them, give them scenarios, teach them, let them know that these things happen out there. And then how they should behave around outsiders. And when it gets to the point whereby they now start to date, how they should go about it. But whilst doing that, we should also be doing our best, our utmost, to tell the outside world not to take these um, reports on face value. Rather, they should look at the things that happened prior to whatever they are getting. So it's two ways. We propagate them, making sure that they do thorough investigation, and then we educate our kids and our boys, our girls, on how to deal with things like that. Make sure it is you follow the right procedures before you get involved in any of such. Okay. Uh, yeah, Mr. Jabidansi, let's hear from you. So you see, that theme, it's um, we Blacks, even women, they are also on this table mm. where all of us were, um, how do I put this? Where everybody, where, where, where everybody else is target mm. on the planet. Okay. That being said, you know, when you're dealing with an autistic child and mm. this autistic child can't talk and is trying to prove a point, but nobody is understanding him. There is this way they show their anger. They just break something That's or they sharp. scream or mm. they go out of control. Now, as a people, we're, we're like the autistic community. Nobody's hearing us. 
Mm. Okay, nobody is ready to listen to us. Everybody else hates us. And we ourselves, we're not doing so much to support one another. So if you see black people now trying to raise their child well, trying to put them right, trying to show them how to do things in the society, you'll be surprised that another black person is the one that will be obstructing you. So that explains why it is easy for the privileged slave to collect horse whip from the master and flog their own. Mm -hmm. Why did I say that? Why did I say that? You train your child well. Your child never stole anything from home. Mm -hmm. Your child will clean, will support you, help you to go shopping, come back. Mommy, are you sure you're okay? Have you tried Panadol? You have a wonderful son. Your son will go out there and somebody will slap him because he's talking to the fine girl in school. And he will try to walk away. Now, the, the bully will still be the one to go and report. And then when they come, nobody wants to listen to your son because he's already black. He's black already. Mm. You know, the same thing when you're driving. The moment you're black, you're driving range. You're a target. Where did you make your money from? Mm -hmm. Are you, what has that got to do with this? Have I run too fast? Did I go in on the red lights? Nobody is asking that question. The first thing is, how did you get the money? Your driving range. What has that got to do with what we're talking about? And then he's asking the police officer, what did I do wrong? And then he's rude. Yeah. All of a sudden, he's arrogant. Mm -hmm. But if a white guy asks the same question, he's not rude. Mm -hmm. You get me? So that thing, no matter how we say it, no matter how we train our kids, no matter how we put them forward to be better people in the society, the color will always hinder them from having a say. Nobody wants to hear them. You know, how do we do it? Do we keep praying to God? Do we start being rebellious? Do we say, okay, black should support black? You can listen to me, it's okay. But will the white next neighbor, will they listen to me? When a big problem, yeah i think i think what we need to do is we are i think we're already doing because having this conversation is already you know tr we're already trying to figure out ways to do the right things and figure out ways to protect our kids okay to make sure that they don't fall into the same issues that we fell the same troubles that we fell into so i think we need to continue to do what we're doing obviously black lives matter so we need to continue ah. to do what we're doing and we need to continue to speak to our children educate our children let them know the kind of situations they need to remove themselves from because god forbid they're standing amongst friends that are also caucasian if anything was to happen and if police was to stop them it would be yeah, that be black first. child that is going to get arrested okay yeah. that's going to be the first person and yuri just going back to your question about um you know the sexual abuse and all of that how do you in, in terms of consent i was watching a film on netflix a few a few weeks back where these two people were about to have sex a boy and a girl and because the, it was so digitalized and so techy, it was in the future anyway. And the both of them, before they started that sexual intercourse, the both of them just said, I consent. And I automatically it. it registered it into a system. So nobody can come back me. and cry wolf. We're, we're now in the era of oh. artificial intelligence. Yeah. I'm sure by the time we get to 2033, yeah. that will be the way to go about to it. To go about it. Anyway, yeah. on that note, we, we're running out of time, but this was a very interesting conversation. Thank you, Mr. Jack Jassix, for coming on set. Thank you, guys. Thank Thank you. You. Nelson, do you want to say something? Yeah, just, just quickly. From what we've talked about so far i think we should then try as much as possible to enlighten our kids yeah do, let's do our part yeah. whilst trying to propagate to the outside world but let's do our part and make sure our kids are all right and doing what is right absolutely yeah, absolutely, absolutely okay so on that note thank you guys so much for coming thank on the show. thank you so much we thank appreciate you. you thank you, and thank I you. Hope, mr jagodansa i hope you will come back on the show right of course, I'm here to support. Oh, yes. Great. Nelson is already comfy. Yes. Nelson and his wine are comfy. Yeah. I know, I know. So I don't know, I don't know if it's wine. <laughs> oh, come back here. Okay. okay. Oh, okay. Thank you, Nelson. Okay, on that note, we're gonna end now before before it ends for us. Okay, so thank you guys for watching. If you haven't already subscribed, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, um, Facebook and Instagram. And again, check out Mr. Jagger Jastics. He puts out amazing content. 
If you're not already following him, you're missing out. I don't know what you're waiting for, but you're definitely missing out. So on that note, we're going to end it. Thank you so much and see you next week. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.